Hey everybody, it's Jasmine. So today I wanted to sit on the bed and do a story time. And this is going to be my first story time in a long time. You guys know I kind of just do like sporadic stories here and there in my tutorials, but I really wanted to go in depth with this one. Now, this happened really recently and I wanted to make this video as a lesson so that you guys can learn from my mistakes and hopefully you guys can not encounter this because if I knew about this then I would have definitely taken the precautions and I would have definitely seen the red flags a little clearer. I mean I did get red flags. I will talk about that but I guess I was giving the situation the benefit of the doubt. Anyway, I'm going to talk about how I almost got scammed. So I do have some receipts and um, I'm going to try and insert as many screenshots as I can throughout the video so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. Uh, so if you guys are unfamiliar with me in my life, I'm a freelance makeup artist. So I do a lot of makeup on people for events, birthdays, prom, wedding, whatever, you name it. That's my job. But it's not a full-time job because not everybody has an event every single day, you know? So I don't get booked often, especially in winter. Winter is like the slowest season when it comes to makeup and makeup appointments, weddings, like there's like no events. So um, I was sitting in my room one day and I've been having a really stressful end of 2018, beginning of 2019, it was just honestly the worst, the worst time of my life. And I get an email the uh, beginning of like the second week of January and I get an email to my business email and it's, should I say the name babe? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we'll call this guy Eddie. Okay. So, this guy says that he is Eddie, he is a director for Annie Lebovitz Photography. I searched up the name of Annie Lebovitz Photography and she's a real person. She's actually a photographer for Forbes magazine, um, she does a lot of things for like Vogue and she's a really famous photographer. I just personally never heard of her. So I am going to read you the email and I am going to talk about the red flags and how I should have prevented it. I came across your works and I am glad to inform you that we are interested in working with you as our makeup artist in our upcoming shoot for models for a sale commercial coming up which includes a video advert and co-operate photo shoot in conjunction with Puma. We are interested in both male and female, a professional talented makeup artist who will be available are required to mail back with a brief introduction and two recent works. Be sure to include your current location in order to be considered for immediate booking. Feel free to mail back for additional information. Red flags right away. Off the first email. I, I wanted to believe it so bad because I have never gotten an opportunity like this before. Now there were so many spelling errors, there were so many punctuation errors, there were so many uh, capitalization errors and I should have taken that as a first red flag because typically when you are getting a business email, more often than not, they should be pretty fluent or pretty proficient in typing, writing, and all that stuff. So the second red flag, I, I should have known this one, but it's actually the subject heading. So the subject heading is makeup artist need. Not really like something that I get from other company so one time I got a package from Yes2 and their heading was say yes to natural beauty. Opportunity for blank and blank, um, collaboration opportunity, anything like that I should have known but like I said I kind of, I, I think in my heart I really wanted this to be true. I wear my heart on my sleeve and I know that I shouldn't. That is my downfall because in the end I get taken advantage of and I definitely need to improve on that. But anyway, 
let's move on. So he gets into details with like the male and female makeup job for the Puma commercial shoot. The event dates are January 25th, um, January 26th, the 27th and 28th and compensation paid as well as the time that they will host the entire shoot. And in the bottom, he has like a little footnote of who he is, the photographer as, you know, and it seemed, it seemed legit, honestly, it did. I said, thank you so much for reaching out to me. I sent him the two pictures of my most recent works. Um, and he said, thank you for reaching out. And then he sends me a big paragraph and he just gives me more information because I did send him an email saying I would love to hear more information about the shoot. I wasn't going to instantly just say, hey, I'm hooked in, but I wanted to say, you know, I want information before I agree to send you any of my personal information. I'll send you my works, whatever, um, but I'm not going to like, you know, send you all that stuff. So he sends me an email about what is going to be happening and then he says thanks for reaching out in regards to the upcoming shoot notice it would be an honor to work with you a bit about annie lebovitz photography we are one of the leaders in professional photography specializing in portraiture and commercial photography we have both the knowledge and expertise to create and capture the perfect image of you and here we are again calling for an upcoming commercial to market collective sales catalogs for the year for bags, shoes, and purses for a reputable Russian-based client, Puma, who believes in fashionable lifestyle. Now, I'm not sure about you, but I've never heard of Puma bags. I mean, like, yeah, duffel bags, backpacks, but not purses. Um, that should have been another red flag, honestly. He gives me information about Puma, and he directs me to, like, Puma's website. Um, he again talks about and reiterates like the event dates, what time, and he said the total money paid for the job is $5,000. And he said it's a tax, tax deductible and I will initially get $500 up front and then after the shoot I will get $4,500. So in total that's going to be the $5,000. The shooting will hold at a rented studio in your location. We shall arrange a suitable studio and convey its detail to you unanimously. We'll be responsible for your transportation and welfare. However, you will not only receive a paycheck of $5,000, but also an extra amount that you will use to pay for a special brand makeup kit from Chanel and YSL that will be used for the models on the shoot, which you can be forwarding to the contracted store manager so you can ship out the makeup kit before the date of the shoot. When you are, I guess, being booked via appointment, and I, and it, what it felt like was he sent it out to a lot of other makeup artists. If you're going to be sending out to somebody like me who lives in the Bay Area, or somebody who lives in the LA area, or somebody who lives in Northern California, whatever the situation may be, there's only going to be one location for a photo shoot. There should be only one location. And I'm talking, like, I know I sound stupid, but this is me learning from my mistake because this is the first time it's ever happened to me. So when you are being booked for a photo shoot, there is only going to be one location. So say they email me and say the location is going to be at so-and-so in San Francisco. We will pay for your thing in, you know, for San Francisco. And... The second red flag in this email um, that he sent me in particular was the fact that he said, I'm going to get paid $500 with an additional amount of money. And I will get into this part a little bit later, but I want you guys to remember, he said he's going to send me an additional amount of money alongside $500. So then I sent him an email back and I said, I appreciate you taking the time to inform me about the event. I do have one question regarding the rented studio. Do you have an estimated idea of where the location will be? Because I was kind of fishy on that. It will be around my area and that he will let me know as soon as the studio is ready. What I said about the $500 and the additional amount, he reiterated himself but with more detail. So, Keep that in mind. He sends me a contract that I will show you here. And honestly, I thought it looked 
like a legit contract. I don't know. Anyway, he asked me in the portion, you know, like what, like my name, my address, um, and then he asked like for a phone number. So I give him my phone number. Um, and typically when you give phone numbers out to companies, it's for shipping purposes. So if they're going to ship you something, typically they need a phone number in order for them to um, give it to you. What happened was this guy, Eddie, starts to text me. And I'm like, um... This is kind of weird because typically when things are handled in a business setting, if I give my, say, phone number to Yes2, because that's an example that I gave earlier, if I gave my phone number to Yes2, I'm pretty sure the person emailing me is not going to text me. They're not going to use that information, you know? They're only going to use it for shipping purposes because that's what businesses do. So... The guy starts to text me at 7.10 a.m. What day was this? He texted me on a Tuesday. That's like the day where I don't have school. So obviously, I was knocked out. I was just in my bed and I didn't wake up. I was one tired, but he kept spamming my phone and I got one, two, three, four, five, six text messages. And finally, I woke up after that one text message. I was like, who is texting me? And he says, hello, Miss Jasmine. In one... Okay, I'm going to hold up my fingers. Hello, Miss Jasmine. Good to you, Miss Jasmine. How was your night? It's me, Edward from Annie Lebovitz's photography studio. Hello? You there? That was all six messages. You said his name. I said Edward? Yeah. Uh -oh. I think you've said it a couple times. A couple hours later, I messaged him um, through text and I said, Hi, Eddie. Curious question. I understand you are a director of Annie Lebovitz Photography. Do you personally have any work you and Annie have collaborated on together? And he said, this is our first project we're doing together. So then, then... I started to get a little questionable about the whole thing. And I said, is there a website to her brand that I can look at? He says, our website is currently under maintenial. That's not even a word uh, at the moment. And once it's back, I will surely get that to you as soon as possible. We'll have your contract agreement signature with us and you have nothing to worry about. And I say, no worries, as far as the photo shoot is concerned, who will be attending? He said, Annie is going to be at the shoot with all the crew members and the models. Um, and then I said, sounds good. If I have any more questions, I'll be sure to ask. Thank you. Fast forward to Saturday, he sends me a text message. He says, how are you doing today and how was your weekend has been with you? There's just a lot of typos and a lot of grammatical errors that he sent me. But I kind of looked past it. And I actually got a mail, like a, like a, what is it? It's like a credit card. It was a credit card in the mail. And since I just moved in with my boyfriend, I have not um, sent anybody my address. I told some companies, my, like some people who send me PR, I told them, hey, uh, I have like a new address, but they've never sent me mail. They've sent me PR, but they've never sent me mail mail. Okay, I'm not gonna tell you guys his phone number, but let me tell you it was from an Austin, Texas area code. And what I did behind the scenes was while he was texting me, I searched up his number. <laughs> I searched up his number and I was trying to search in hopes that I would find somebody <laughs> who had his number. I don't know. I was like really skeptical about it. And then the mail that I got, it said in the top corner that it was sent from Austin, Texas. So I sent him an email and I said, do you have any association with this credit card company? Because, you know, it's from Austin, Texas. And I noticed that your area code from your phone number is from Austin, Texas. He actually didn't say anything. He just talked about the check again, which 
is another, yet again, red flag. He texts me Monday, so this is, today, right now, the day that I'm filming this, um, today is Saturday, January 26th, so earlier this week on Monday, he texts me early in the morning, again, well actually not early in the morning, it was actually like in the afternoon, but I think I was taking a nap, because I woke up irritated. So he texts me and he said, hello, how are you doing today, you there? I said, hi Edward, and then he... <laughs> this dude! Sit in here, you should just bust him out, put his number and everything. I'm just, I'm just, just expose his ass. Uh, damn near. Oh my god. Okay, so anyway, he, he keeps blowing up my phone. Hello, how are you doing today? Are you there? Hello! I want you to know that FedEx is going to be delivering the check to you by tomorrow. And so, the next day, he continues to text me, so this is Tuesday now. Hello, I want you to know that FedEx um, was unable to del deliver the package. I'll keep you updated. Hello, are you there? Please let me know if you're getting my message. Are you there? And I'm just like, why? Like, why is this dude blowing up my phone? First of all, I hate it when people blow up my phone like that. It's not professional to blow up somebody's phone in multiple messages like that. Yeah, okay, I get it. Sometimes you have to send a double message, and that's fine. But if you're sending me like six, seven messages over and over and over again within the span of like one minute, it's not professional. And that's, that's another note that you guys should take into consideration. It's not professional at all. Wednesday comes along, and he gives me the FedEx tracking number. I also contacted Puma themselves and I asked them if this was a legitimate offer and this was their response to me. As you can see, they completely ignored my concern and that was the only response I got. So uh, this is where I am going to put my phone down and talk about it because there's so much that I want to talk about that reading the text messages will just take time away. So Wednesday happens and I am laying in bed. He sends me the tracking link to the package and he sends it to me in an envelope, right? And so within the envelope, there's another envelope and within that envelope has the check. I get the check it's $3,850. I, according to this guy, was supposed to only get $500. So I am thinking, this is a lot of money. And I ended up talking to my boyfriend's dad and I said, this is a lot of money. Like, I, like, I don't think like this is right. And I'm really skeptical at this point. And I'm like, this, this really just doesn't seem right because I was thinking that it wasn't going to be that much. But I thought about it and I was like, oh, well, he did say, like, um, the makeup kit was going to have Chanel YSL. And the thing about me is that I give people the benefit of the doubt. And I know I shouldn't do that because that's a reason why people take advantage of me. And it's something that I'm working on to, you know, not happen again. But I was thinking, okay, well, uh, maybe it's going for the makeup kit that he promised. So he continues to text me and text me and text me. And he ends up saying, oh, well, just deposit the check in your account. And he kept on persisting me to do it. And I felt very pressured, so I did a mobile deposit. So um, what you do, if you're unfamiliar with that, you like take a check and then you just take a picture and then if you have the app to the bank on your phone, then it does it automatically. But the one thing about that is, if you do a mobile deposit, the check itself will go into your account, right? So, so that $3,850 was in my account, but it says, pending but it does show up as monetary value in my account if that makes any sense so then he's like now you have to go to walmart and money gram me the money and 
I'm just like, MoneyGram? What the hell is that? I have never heard of MoneyGram. I tell my boyfriend, because he gets off work, I tell my boyfriend, and my boyfriend is like starting to get skeptical as well. He's like, I don't really know, babe. And we're just on our way, and he's getting the guy, he's getting to the point where he's just like, let me know when you're there, um, and all this stuff. And in my head, I didn't tell my boyfriend, but in my head, I thought he was like physically going to be there, and like gonna kill me but that's besides the point I think like I was just paranoid but I go to the money ground place and I fill out two pieces of paper because this guy is like you need to send $1,450 to so-and-so and you also need to send $1,450 to so-and-so so there's two people that I'm sending money to and I'm just in my mind I'm like why am I gonna send but I didn't question it but I should have questioned it I really should have questioned it but the only response that he was giving me was this is for your makeup kit this is for your makeup kit and you know what was it it was Wednesday and he said oh the photo shoot is gonna be on Friday so I'm just like okay, well now I feel rushed and everything's like coming so quickly and I don't know what to do. So I go to the Walmart money ground place and the lady, she says, why are you sending this much money? And I said, oh, um, it's for my job. And she says, what do you do? And she's like, she's just holding the papers and I say, well, I'm a makeup artist. And she said, who contacted you and she's like asking all these questions and I'm like I'm gonna get scammed I'm gonna get scammed I'm gonna get scammed and then she says sweetie you're being scammed and I was like oh I like it was I wasn't mad first reaction I wasn't mad and you know I am the type of person that when things like this occur, I get really pissed off. But I wasn't mad because like I low-key knew it at this point. Like Wednesday was the day where it like all rained down and I was like, damn, like I really like feel really uneasy about this. This is not okay. And I just felt very pressured. What do you do? Like the money is in my account and I like I did it via check and I did it via mobile deposit. Like what do I do? And so the lady is like telling me all the things that I needed to do. I will tell you guys if you ever experience this, I will tell you guys how I managed to do it. I'm still in a shithole, but I will tell you guys. Oh my god, so me and my boyfriend are rushing to the bank to try and cancel the check. And I literally run in there and I say Hey, I need you to do me a favor. <laughs> I just got scammed. <laughs> and they're like, oh my God. So I'm in there for like literally an hour. The lady who is taking care of me is making a bunch of different phone calls. And the only option she gives me is to either just not use my debit card, just try not to, or have my card locked suspended can't use it at all and I'm like suspend it I don't care do it now I don't want it this is just the worst day of my life just cut it off but in the meantime of driving from Walmart to the bank sitting with the lady this dude is blowing up my phone and me, I was like, okay, the more messages he was sending me back to back, the angrier I got. But it wasn't the fact that I was being scammed. It was the fact that like, this guy's not leaving me alone and I can't take one more vibration of my phone. I can't take one more ring on my phone because when I hear that one more ring, I will pop off. Like it was like one of those situations. I know that when I talked about like my pet peeves in that one video, I talked about how when I'm already angry and something is repeating itself, I will, I will pop off eventually. And it was getting to the point where I was about to throw my phone across the damn bank because I was like, I can't with this dude. He needs to stop. And there was a point where I was about to clap back at him and he said, hi, um, like, are you done? And I said, I'm not done because I'm reporting you to the police. And I was, I, I was just so upset. But anyway, what happens is, my card has to be locked for a week. So what's going to happen is the bank is going to situ like find a way to situate this, find a way to 
take the check out of my account and it's harder because it was a mobile deposit and it wasn't something physical so I have to leave it up to the bank to do all that nitty gritty stuff and I don't want anybody to go through that because if the check went, goes through and it's not pending anymore, I can get charged for fraudulent what is it fraudulent possession of like money or like stealing money from a different bank or like stealing money okay just stealing money and that will get taken like I would have to pay so much money and not only that what if I did send the money off to the people in MoneyGram that's taking money out of my account that $1,450 on both sides that's going to be taken out of my account because I'm the one doing the fraudulent work and on top of that the money that I have to pay and I let me tell you I don't even have $1,450 in my bank account I don't have that so for that to be two times the amount and then get charged and all this stuff I would be broke as a joke I think my life would have just ended like my life would probably be worth that like you know and so I was just stressed out for the past few days and he's been texting me and the I think yesterday was the day where he finally quit it yesterday Friday or was it today that he stopped I can't remember let me just trace back yeah, Friday was the last day he texted me. But T, so my boyfriend, oh, so thank the Lord for my boyfriend because he, the guy, the guy decides to call me. He decides to call me and when he starts to call me, I'm like, please stop. I'm just, I'm literally in bed like, like Jesus. Like, Where's Jesus? Jesus, like, please help me. I, I was just like, oh my God, he's really like not quitting. So my boyfriend says, do you want me to call him on my phone? So his phone and tell him that I'm your manager. And I was like, you are so smart. Like, you're so smart. And so my boyfriend decides to call him and it's a Google Voice number. So what that is, is my boyfriend downloaded Google Voice because it says, hi, you're calling a Google, here. My boyfriend created a Google Voice number and I will call it and I will, t and you guys will hear it on speaker of what it tells you. Hello, please state your name after the tone and Google Voice will try to connect you. So, not all, Listen, if you don't know what Google Voice is, I didn't know what Google Voice is, my boyfriend didn't know what Google Voice is, if you don't know what that is, anybody with a Google account can have a phone number via Google. And it could be used, like, some people use it for business, for, like, good intentions, but, like, scammers can use a Google Voice number and they have the ability to call you, to text you, leave voicemails, literally everything that a phone service can provide you and that's what this guy was using on me and not only is it untrackable but it's just it's just so anonymous like you can pick you can pick area codes from anywhere you cannot even be living in california or texas or any place and you could be using their area code so you can't track this person down. And trust me, I went to the police station after I had the bank visit. I went to the police station to file a report. You know what they told me? You know what the police told me? We can't do anything about it because we don't know his information. And we can't take a report. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the bank to situate my um, problem and alleviate this stress but it sucks because not only can I just not use my debit card but I'm like broke right now so yeah I just want you guys to learn from my mistakes obviously I made some dumb choices but we all have to go through dumb choices and dumb mistakes to learn from it 
we're not going to learn if we don't make mistakes. And this was definitely a learning experience, whether I liked it or not. And I want you guys to learn from me and to be very wise about decisions. And I know um, this happens a lot, and I'm sorry if it happened to you, but as long as we take precautious measures, I'm sure that we can get through it and, you know, just report it go like if if something is fishy and you get a check in the mail you can go to the bank and authorize it if, if something is fishy going on you can talk to somebody about it of higher authority and you know there's just other ways that you can prevent things from going too far like me um, I know I didn't fully get scammed but I almost did if it weren't for the lady at Walmart she's my hero anyway um, if you guys have any more questions about this or um, if you guys want to leave your stories down below for other people to learn from then I would be happy to listen to them in the comment section below as always I love you guys so much and I will see you guys in my next one bye peace out Girl Scouts